Hey everyone, this is our recap for the Glow Time event. Uh, I'm Nico, and today we have Christina with us. And dialed in uh, remote via remote video link, we have Will. Yeah, I'm going to be looking up there. Good morning. How you going, bro? Yeah, all good. Thank you. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, today we're going to cover off the major headlines, which is new phones, new Apple Watch, uh, some updates on the AirPods front, and we'll cover all that. But first, how how are we doing, Christina? How are you? Yeah, good. I think um, the early morning might have killed me. It sounds like I'm yeah, sound, you sound a little, under the yeah, weather yeah, yeah. a little bit, so excuse my voice. I'm going to try my best. Um, but yeah, I apologize for that. Um, but no, it's very exciting. There's a yeah, few, few things I'm super stoked for. Nice, nice. Hey, Will, I know you got up early too. You, you doing all right? Yeah, no, I'm uh, I'm surviving. I did get back to sleep, but I don't know if that was probably a bad decision. I'm now like not sure what time of day it is, but <laughs> we'll be all right. We'll get through this together. That's it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Straight in, we're going to jump into what they announced first, which is Apple Watch Series 10. Now, uh, uh, we mentioned this already earlier today, and that is just uh, Apple just doing the Apple thing. Very, uh, you know, incremental on their updates. So the 10... Let's just rattle off through the features. So we've got a new larger screen. Uh, there's also a new uh, material that they're using called Jet Black, which is like a polished aluminum. And now they've got polished titanium replacing the uh, stainless steel options. Yep. So they're going for a wide angle OLED display, which is 40% brighter um, and an improved uh, always on uh, refresh rate. So that's really cool. Uh, powered by the S10 uh, chip, with a four-core neural engine, uh, built-in speaker, uh, and and some improved um, cellular uh, reception as well. It's the thinnest ever, uh, but also it. This is probably interesting for me. It uh, has a possible sleep apnea detection. Yeah. Yeah, I found that interesting. What was your take on that? I thought that was really cool. Obviously, there's been a really big emphasis on health, even more I think in this event than ever. Yeah. Um, so there's a couple of other things, you know, with a few of the other products that were announced um, with a few extra features um, focused around specific health issues that people are experiencing. And, I mean, they did talk about how many people actually do experience sleep apnea and that it does go undiagnosed for quite a long time. So I think it'll be um, good for people to have access to that so easily and then to be able to actually take it to your doctor was another thing that they sort of focused on as well. Exactly. Uh, we saw this with uh, when they released ECG, right? Uh, a yeah. lot of people didn't really know what their ECG recording would be like. And I think this is going to be similar. I reckon mm. well, th their statistics are probably true. 80% of people are undiagnosed with sleep apnea. So mm. this is going to revolutionize that industry, you know, taking another step forward in the health market, which is awesome. Yeah. And, and bringing it right to the watch too. So no need for something extra or an, or an additional accessory. It just comes with the with the watch. Mm -hmm. It reminds me similarly of uh, when they uh, did the cycle tracking for females. Yep, yeah. Um, you know, I remember when that came out and the temperature well, yeah, sen sensing. You can naturally sort of track your own cycles. Yeah, yeah. And that was a big difference. And I thought that was a major plus but just not for me. Yeah. So obviously. I was like, that, that's really cool and all, but how, how does that, you know, great, great. But yeah, um, well, now this feature's for you. Well, there this you is, go. This is very close to home. You I, can either I, tell, <laughs> tell your wife she's either wrong or right. Oh, no, no, she's definitely right. There's, uh, there's definitely some breathing stopping happening. So uh, oh, it doesn't sound great anyway. Uh, but that's a great update. We'll, we're uh, very excited for that. Some interesting apps. So they also announced uh, the Tides app and a depth app. So the Tides app gives you um, tidal information uh, for uh, most coastlines. Uh, interestingly, uh, it will give you the seven day sort of forecast for that, but also um, it's great for people who canoe and kayak not me, but I'm sure if you do, then that's awesome. And they said snorkeling as well. Oh, there you go. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So you can uh, record the temperature of the water that you're in. So when you're swimming or diving, it'll actually show you on your wrist what temperature the water is. Um, so you're not going to have like 15, you know, Apple Watches all doing different things. Uh, a bit like Sky, uh, Spy Kids back in the day, you know. It'll just do it all on one watch. Were you awesome. one of the ki kids in Spy Kids? I very well could have been, yeah. <laughs> Uh, also, speaker playback. Uh, I found that very interesting. Um, water temperature you mentioned, fastest charging ever. I mean, you know, I wear the watch and I'm sure you, I think you had had the watch for, for a while as well. 
I did. Yeah, I had the first ever one and yeah. I've sort of chopped and changed a garment and everything yeah. because of the battery life and things like that. So yeah. I am definitely tossing out whether I, I go back now that it is thinner. I yeah. think that's a massive thing. Right. Um, and the battery life is still about the same, I think, as um, the 9, mm. but I think with very, very slight improvements and obviously the fast charging will make a massive it, difference. It definitely matters when – because I wear mine to sleep. I'm, yeah. I'm kind of obsessed with my sleep data. Um, but that's usually an opportune time to actually charge yeah. charge the device. So now that you can fast charge, you can sort of pick any time that suits exactly. you best to, to charge it. Well, I um, think they said um, it's up to 80% in 30 minutes. So cool. that's go. easy. I mean, imagine in 15 minutes, you know, if you've only got 15 minutes, at least that, that's all you need. So um, it definitely will help, I think. Jumping straight into... Apple Watch Ultra 2. So they announced not an Ultra 3, but a new finish for the 2, which is a satin black, uh, which is recycled aluminum and uh, new bands uh, to go along with it as well. Uh, I believe it's the same price point and in terms of features, uh, most the same uh, that we uh, outlined. So sleep apnea detection, better battery um, there's also an interesting uh, app with the uh, translation. Did you guys catch that? There was the uh, translation app on the watch now yes. that does a yep. good job of on-device translation, which, yeah, if you're traveling, that would be amazing, especially if you don't have data on the go. At the moment, we've still got some features that are hidden within there. So like crash detection, that's yep. mass- massively machine learning. Um, and so... You can see they're kind of iterating a little bit here to get more on machine learning in such a small device. Yeah. It's pretty great stuff. I mean, hopefully we see in the next couple of years Apple, Apple Intelligence standalone on Apple Watch. That would be awesome. And and that's it. That's the, that's the common theme we're seeing here. I mean, and it happens year on year where these features just uh, permeate from like device to device. Like you're getting all of these benefits uh, and I think that's probably the reason why we're all embedded mm. into this ecosystem is because we're seeing these these features and benefits uh, throughout all of the different um, uh, bits of product that are announced. I was just going to talk about the new titanium Milanese loop as well, yeah, which I, looks I awesome. Oh, right, yes, I'm really yes. keen to try that on. Uh, it's got like a new little, uh, it's like a parachute mechanism. Yeah. So when you do it up, it just clicks into place and you've got like two little clasps that unhook it. Oh, I'm really keen to try it on. Um, and yeah, hopefully it's it lives up to its expectation there. So who's getting the new watch? Are you going to get one, Will? I might upgrade myself. I've, had, I've got an Apple Watch 8. Mm-hmm. And I might upgrade to the Ultra 2 in the black. Yeah. That would be cool. In black, there you go. Yeah. I, mm. If you want to know my style choice, I can send you a photo of, uh, of my yeah, style no, choice. We got Maybe we can morning. upload it here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Show yeah. on screen now. That's it. <laughs> I haven't had time yeah. to dive deep into the style of it, but yeah. Well, let's change nice. gears to the nice. AirPods and the announcements there, Christina. We got AirPods 4 and then AirPods 4 with active noise cancellation. Yeah, I did notice that. So a slight difference in the price depending on if you want that feature. Yeah. Um, personalized spatial audio, mm. some voice isolation, finally USB-C charging case, um, as well as a 30-hour battery life and wireless charging as well. So there's a few extra little bits added. So I feel like this is very much getting into AirPods Pro 2 territory yeah. in terms of uh, what it comes with. Yeah. Um, it start- the feature parity is getting closer for sure. Yeah, yeah. That's what I felt when when I saw the, the highlights. I'm like, which one is for me now? Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to know exactly which one you would go for seeing as they all kind of cross over maybe a little bit. But not to leave the AirPods Pro 2 in the dark too much. I think they announced a couple improvements there too, right? Yeah. So um, AirPods Pro 2 has a few new health features. So the one that I really loved was um, the hearing aid test. So you can actually do a test through AirPods Pro 2 and it'll tell you whether, you know, you are experiencing any hearing loss or anything like that. Um and then again, you can take that to your doctor. You can take them the, the data that's in the health app so they can actually see um, and then go from there. There's also assistance with speech amplification as well. Um, and yeah, there's a, I mean, there's probably a bunch more that I'm forgetting. With AirPods Pro 2, 
um, the new kind of, I guess it's going to be a firmware update for this, right? Yeah. Um, but the new firmware update should contain the ability to have clinically, mm. clinical level of hearing aid technology yeah. in your ear, just using AirPods. So you like people that are almost afraid of the word hearing aid. I mean, everyone wears AirPods, exactly. so you can't really be afraid of the word AirPods. So that's awesome. And like, I know that my parents, as they get more senior, they probably want to use something that's a bit more trendy rather than the ones which kind of like wrap around your ear in the traditional sense. Yeah. Um, so I think that's awesome. Um, yeah, I think it's an interesting way to tackle it because like there's this, I guess, I don't know if you want to call it folklore or an assumption that if you wear um, headphones, earphones a lot, that it's bad for your ears. Well, you know what I mean? It's the opposite now. I think it's going to protect you a lot. I mean, I think a lot of people are more health conscious now. Yeah. Um, I mean, I go to a lot of concerts and you see people with um, proper earplugs in now, like ones that you spend a little bit of money on to make sure you're protected. Like I wear them now because I think over the years it's probably depleted my hearing. So I am more conscious of it. And now with the fact that you can actually just use your headphones to help protect in certain environments is amazing. Again, one one less device to exactly. have to invest in. Or well, sometimes like I forget, you know, my special little earplugs that I take to concerts and, you know, I start to freak out because I don't want to, you know, ruin my hearing even more. Mm. So if I have my AirPods Pro with me, no problems. One more feature that is going to be great for business is uh, AirPods 4 and AirPods Pro 2 and AirPods Max, I think, are all going to have uh, the conversation awareness feature. So you're at work, you're listening to music, you're typing away, you're really engaged and someone comes up to you from behind and says, oh, sorry, can you just do something? Mm -hmm. You know, normally they'll be like, oh, wait, he's got his AirPods in, let me tap you on the shoulder first and then you have to take your AirPods out. And this will just eliminate that, you know, it will just lower your volume and then you'll be able to hear someone speak, which is so cool. I'm, I'm game. I'm game for that. Yeah, I thought that one was really good as well. You mentioned AirPods Max, so new colours and USB-C yep. available. So we got Midnight, Blue, purple, orange, and starlight. Yeah, nice colours, I thought. And same price. If you're, if you're not getting purple, I don't want to be your friend. That's all I'm saying. Wow, <laughs> there we go. There's, there it is. You heard it here. But that was about it for the changes for um, yeah. AirPods Max, not huge. And at least, at least it is for the same price as well. They haven't bumped it up or anything. So I think in, in by ways of opinion, I think AirPods 4 is the goer. Yeah, yeah. That, that looks like a really decent upgrade. Straight to the phones. Let's just jump into iPhone 16. It feels like there's kind of uh, two main subject matters for the iPhone 16, 16 Pro lineups this year. You've got Apple Intelligence and then uh, Camera Control. So that's a new button that sits on the side of the phone. Um, it has some haptic feedback. It's covered in a sapphire glass and then uh, it's actually got a stainless steel border. Uh, so you click it once and it will open up the camera for you. Uh, you then tap it lightly and it will bring up more controls for the camera. So there's no more kind of like scroll, having to touch the screen in different places to bring up like um, aperture control or exposure control. You can just do that straight from that button. And um, it's kind of connected to the DSLR experience of having that functional wheel at the top. So it's all kind of playing into um, a really great leading product for any photographer that wants to just use their phone or vice versa. Any phone user that wants to be a photographer, um, which is awesome. Um, coming a little bit further into the cameras, we've got uh, 48 megapixels as standard now on both models. Oh, so true. 48 megapixels on the uh, standard wide camera. Um, they're using a fusion technology. It basically means yeah. that you can have two cameras in the same thing. So um, you'll get your one times and two times zoom from one camera, which is awesome. Um, and then on the base level models, you'll also have your ultra wide camera and that's a, a 24 megapixel sensor, I think. Um, and then uh, going over to the uh, iPhone 16 Pro, you'll have a 48 megapixel standard camera, that same fusion camera that's from the other device. Um, and then you'll have uh, a 48 megapixel telephoto lens, and that's a five-time zoom. I use it on my 15 Pro, and it's absolutely amazing. 
But to have that uh, increase in megapixel is going to be so cool. It means that you can zoom in even further, basically digitally afterwards, and it'll be nice and crisp. Um, and then the standard uh, ultra wide camera. So that's a pretty good upgrade in terms of camera tech. Um, it might sound like it's minimal, but I think the output is going to be enormous for this. Um, I'll I also jump Christina, in and say the, um, on the camera. Oh, oh, sorry. So, sorry, Will. I'll also jump in and say that the five yeah. times telephoto is available on both pro models now. When on the 15, it was only yeah. uh, available on the, the Max. Yeah. On the big one. We, uh, I went the Max for the five times telephoto, no, and true. now I'd, I don't have to. Well, I'm stuck with this phone for, for a while. I can't see myself upgrading. But uh, for those who whose upgrade cycle is uh, the 16, they don't have to go to the Max, which is awesome. Christina, you, you're really keen for the camera control, right? It was yeah. something, a feature that you've wanted for a while. I mean, there's been a, a lot of rumors swirling around about um, the capture control, so I've sort of been just waiting to see it come, you know, yeah. for the past year or so. Yeah. Um, obviously, having studied photography, and photography is my main hobby outside of, you know, what I do for work, um, it, you know, oh, having yeah. your phone be as close as to your actual SLR is just so much better. So much better than carrying around, you know, your big Sony DSLR or your mirrorless or what's, whatever. What's the saying? Um, the best camera is in your is, is in the your one front. you have. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm I'm really really excited for. It. I wish I had something like this, you know, on the trip I just went to Iceland because I feel like it would have made it that much better in just being able to quickly change any of like the aperture settings or the, um, you know, exposure or anything like that. So, it it will make a massive difference, and I see. I think we'll see a bigger sort of, um, you know, the shot on iPhone community grow even more now because, yeah. you know, the the photos that come out are just amazing. So it's putting more control in the shooter's hands. Making it more, you know, similar to, I don't know if you guys ever studied photography when you were in school, but when you first learnt um, how to use film, you know, and you would manually change each and every, you know, aperture and your shutter speed and, your ISO. So it's making all those settings more available to the everyday person who might not know, you know, what to do with each setting. Without having to dig into it. so that You don't have to, but it's there if, if you want it, you yeah. know, if you are more experienced or you want to learn or, you know, if there are certain parts you want, you want to tweak. Um, so this button's going to give you the ability to quickly yep. access those settings via touch. Exactly. And you don't then, have to move. Yeah, right. So That's the main thing, I think. So you, within a few moments... You got your you got your subject in front of you. You're just using your finger, you can get into those settings. Yeah, have it set, and then bang, take the shot. Yeah, and I think that's like the downfall with my phone now. I mean, I've got the iPhone 14 Pro Max, um, and I know probably the downfall with using it, you know, for a lot of photos, especially when you're traveling and stuff like that, and you want to adjust the exposure. You know, you do have to switch from you know where you're actually focusing on and clicking on on your screen itself. Whereas now, you know, with the iPhone 16 Pro Max, you can do it all from, you know, just adjusting that little capture setting. Area. Perfect. <laughs> so, awesome. you're up, so you're all upgrading, right, so sounds yeah, like. Yeah, 100%. I'm done. Like, that's it. That's my, my one's getting in. traded in Friday. Yeah. I'm pre-ordering. Like, Whoa. I've been, yeah, I've been waiting. So, yeah, wow. I'm, yeah, super excited. I haven't actually, you know, honed in. I, probably gold, I'd say. Um, that's probably the only thing I don't like sometimes is with um, the pro models is they don't get the same love with the colors. Um, they're so usually the boring options. They're usually boring because, yeah. you know. You, pro. Yeah, you're yeah. pro. You don't yeah. need it. But Will, <laughs> you want to jump in? I was just going to actually touch back on the iPhone 16 colors because we've got three new oh, colors. Yeah, this year, nice. Speaking so of colors, ultramarine, yeah, so nice. So we've got ultramarine, we've got teal, pink. And they join the standard white and uh, black that we've had from previous years. I think the black is actually a little bit of a new finish, but I'm not entirely sure yet. Maybe it's just the photos. Um, but they look really quite yeah. cool. Again, the teal phone. That's my pick. The teal is going to be a winner this year. Um, you think that cool one's going to be one that sells out um, the most? I reckon so, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I know that my sister is a massive fan of teal, so... Uh, if she's not going to buy it, then no one will. You know? <laughs> um, it is all organic dye that they're using as well right. to actually create those colours. That oh. was one thing I picked up um, when they were talking about it. So that's pretty cool. Coming back to sustainability cool. and health and everything exactly. like that, I think it's it's really cool. Well, you mentioned yeah, uh, improved battery life amongst the phones. 
Yes, absolutely. So the battery lives uh, are going to be boosted just a little bit um, from the previous years. So I think iPhone 16 is getting, uh, I think it's like 27 hours video playback. Um, the iPhone 16 Pro range is going to get up to 33 video, 33 videos. The iPhone 16 <laughs> Pro range is going to get up to 33 hours of video playback, uh, which is huge. That's like What's that like a day and a half of full streaming? I don't know when you're going to use 33 hours of video playback, but maybe, um, maybe you can, and that's the that's the important thing. Um, and all of that is actually coming into play. They've got a new subframe in the phones, so on both models, uh, you've actually got a new subframe sat behind all of the battery and chips. So uh, this is better thermal conduction. Um, it's going to allow for a little bit more processing speed. So um, we have obviously seen a spec bump on the chips themselves. Um, I know that they're saying up to 20%, roughly 20% on both devices uh, in improved speeds. So uh, that's both CPU related, GPU related, but that allows for that allows for Apple intelligence to come into play. So um, all of that, uh, extra processing power is going to be utilized. It's not like it's just going to sit spare on your device. Um, it's going to be something that Apple intelligence utilizes on an ongoing basis. And I think that was an extra feature here. Obviously, Apple intelligence is only going to be available from iPhone 15 Pro and above. So that's including iPhone 16 standard models, which is awesome. So every newcomer to iPhone from now on will get Apple intelligence. Comes later... Uh, this year for America, and then it comes in December for us in Australia, um, and for my parents and friends in the UK, uh, mm. it's December as well, just, just so you know. Um, and uh, I think there's some really cool features that are coming in uh, by using that product. It's going to be pretty like game changing in my eyes. Yeah, I think we were mentioning that earlier. Like, if there's anything, if everything feels very like spec bump, very like um, just um, ir- what's the word again? Ir- ir- irrit- irritative. <laughs> irritative. <laughs> or incremental. Um, this is really the, 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 big, the big shiny one, yeah. new thing. Yeah, the hero feature, uh, Apple Intelligence, which um, I think we'll cover in more detail uh, in other bits of content that we'll, we'll shoot. Uh, but yeah, su- super exciting. Um, lots of uh, amazing... Uh, breakthrough ways to harness technology um, that yeah that we'll, we'll cover off in in, uh, in more detail later time uh, but just to wrap up the the phones uh, so we got uh, uh, can we talk pricing one more about that, sorry yeah can we talk maybe talk pricing and maybe uh, when it when, when it's available yeah absolutely so um, the both phones are available uh, from the 20th of September. Um, which lines up with the new iOS 18. So it should be popping out at uh, 17th, I think we're seeing. Um, so they'll be shipped with iOS 18. Um, the pricing for the standard phones starts at uh, $1,399 Australian um, and $1,599 for the iPhone 16 Plus. So for the Plus, Plus model. And then for the Pro devices, um, we've got $1,799 for the 16 Pro, and then 2,149 for the 16 Pro Max. Now, all devices are shipping with 128 gigabytes as standard, which is, I know that they've done that before, Mm. but I think it's a really good thing. Like 64 gigabytes is too small. In my eyes, anybody that has more than that probably doesn't need it unless they're using it for like video work or photography work like yourself, Christina. Uh, you're just not going to need Even that much then, storage. Um, just get iCloud instead. Exactly. You can still store a lot of things um, in iCloud and you can also, you know, same for Adobe and stuff like that. So um, I think another thing yeah. we probably forgot to mention was some of the the new video features. Um, yeah, let's jump into that. Yeah. So um, you do have 4K, 120 frames per second. Um, and you can also now change that later on. So if you shoot in 120, you can change that after where you can't do that now. So right. some of that power that you see behind um, all all the nerdy stuff that Will was talking about yeah. is also going towards a lot of the video. I think they've really pushed that this year and you could see it um, in the promo that they had using the weekend and shooting yep. his video and everything. Yeah. 
the cinematic slow mo is oh, such a good feature, and so cool. um, I actually reckon a lot more filmmakers are going to start yeah. using iPhone because of that feature specifically. Yeah. Just being able to slow down footage after edit, and you can choose the slowness just based off the frame rate, which is like such a good way of doing it. It's really it's cool. Awesome. Like I'm not, I'm not super into video, but just seeing that and seeing how easy it is yeah. makes you want to use it more. Yeah. And then also, um, I think with that too is you can now um, mix the audio within a lot of the edits, which maybe you probably yeah no you're I definitely more an audio guy. I, I definitely wanted to dive into that. So there's an audio mix feature using machine learning mm. to define and separate the audio. There's standard in mix, uh, in frame mix, studio mix, and cinematic mix. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of. Uh, do you remember portrait mode? Yep. It's like portrait yeah. mode, but for audio. Yeah. Like you can choose different sort exactly. of defined presets, uh, but then also dial in whatever you want. Another tidbit there is uh, based on that feature in voice memos, yeah. you can uh, layer tracks on top and then you can mute uh, each layer after the fact. Yeah. So I can see that being exactly. used in, hey, in many ways. If you, if you think of how this connects a nice little thread through the Apple product ecosystem. Yeah. If you've got the Apple Vision Pro and yeah. you have the audio and the visuals all coming in and yeah. actually both of these models will be able to shoot spatial audio and spatial video at the same time. So you can actually then watch it back yeah. on your Apple Vision Pro and it's the immersive cool experience which everyone's imagining. Which is oh, so, so you cool. can shoot spatial for both 16 and 16 Pro. Is that right? Correct. Ooh, is yeah. it for 16? Yeah, yeah, 16, because they've got the cameras positioned True, ready yeah. for spatial video. Well, yeah. that was deliberate, eh? <laughs> yeah, right. Well, no, that, well, yeah, they're just, you know, doing favors for their other products. And, and Apple Vision Pro, I mean, what a revelation. We'll, get, yeah. we'll definitely get into that as well. One really, really nerdy one. Go. Wi Fi 7 as standard. That only came out and was certified in January. So, God knows how they're managing to ship that immediately with Wi-Fi 7. We thought we were going to have to wait another like year, two years to see phones with Wi-Fi 7. Right. Got it. A standard. I mean, awesome. for, for the non-nerdy people in the room, what does that actually mean though, Will? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, not that much. Um, it's, it's basically just like a super low latency. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, no, it's just super low latency. Um uh, was kind of like high fidelity audio essentially, but for Wi-Fi. So you can stream a lot more content That's to more devices cool. at the same time. Um, so you, yeah, it's just a better bandwidth basically. It's just better. That's all we need to know. Perfect. Well, yeah. it's future proofing as well. Mm. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah. What you, like, what you need to know is that it's got a higher number. And that always <laughs> means it's better, really. 16 <laughs> is better than 15. Oh, well, yeah. There you go. So going back to AirPods, um, and touching on some of the pricing there. Yeah. So we've got AirPods 4 starting at 219 which is a great... I think that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. a great starting point. And then with active noise cancelling at 299 yeah. which will be great for businesses as well, I think, um, and super important. AirPods Max yep. um, from 899 so um, same price as previously yep. from memory. Yep. And then AirPods Pro 2 from 399 so, so where I fit in there is Pro 2. That's that's me. AirPods Max is just, I mean, it's great, but goodness. Pretty, that's though. that's they're, they're they're so nice. <laughs> That's a bit exy for me. Yeah, well, just get, no, you got, I think you've got to get them just in purple. <laughs> there, there you go. I've I'll told you what purple. Okay. The Apple Watch display uh, is actually kind of pretty revolutionary, actually. I mean, it's an ultra-wide OLED display, so... All that really means is that the pixels are shaped a little bit concave. Um, and so the light that comes out of them can be viewed from more angles. So if you look at your Apple Watch now and you look from like the side, you, I can barely see the light that's coming from it. But yeah. on Apple Watch 10, uh, it'll be as bright as if you look straight on. Um, the new improved subframe that they've got inside the watch and the new battery that they've put in it actually also means that you can do always on display that refreshes every single second. So uh, standard at the moment, Apple Watch 8, Apple Watch 9 have a one minute refresh when it's on standby or when it's on the display standby mode. Um, but going to one um, second refresh 
when it's in always on display, I think is awesome. So you can actually see the second hand going round mm. rather than like when you tap it, it then tells you the more accurate time. Um, so that's pretty cool. And I think uh, they were saying like up to 2,000 nits of brightness or something like that. Yeah. And I think they said 40%, for a little device. 40% brighter when looking at it from, from an angle now, which yeah. ma- makes a massive difference. Um, another thing to touch on as well that they were very focused on was all the carbon neutral by 2030. Um, and with the Apple Watch 10, we've got a stainless, the stainless steel model that is 20, up to 20% lighter and completely carbon neutral as well. So that was, that was pretty good, I thought. They're on track for those goals, feels like. 85% uh, recycled aluminium in the iPhone 16. Yeah. Um, I think it was around about the same figure for the iPhone 16 Pro. Um, all of the packaging that comes with every single product this year is fiber-based, so no more plastic kind of like glad wrap yeah. feel. Uh, it's just going to be fiber and then the mm-hmm. cardboard strips that they've got on the products currently. Um, so, yeah, I think they're heading towards their goal, which is pretty crazy. Yeah. Having been like a fanboy for so long, it's like if, if you hoard the boxes, which I do, they just get smaller <laughs> and smaller every year. <laughs> Rather than air freight, a lot of the yeah. watches, which is what they've done in previous years, she decided to do uh, a shipment on water shipment, which means that it would be a lower uh, carbon cost overall, which is awesome. I think we'll do a rapid fire. All right, which one? Which ones for so, us? So yeah, what? Yeah, what? What would you pick and why? Yeah. I think yeah. yeah. Will do you want to start? Yeah, cool. I'll, I'm probably going to go for the Apple Watch Ultra Two Black. Um, there's a, I know I said the titanium Milanese loop, but there's also a really nice green sport band which looks pretty powerful with it. I think so I might maybe delve green. into that. Probably. Yeah. Uh, and the only reason yeah. I'd want I'd want that. To, that specific setup. Um, I'm pretty into my fitness at the moment, trying to get better, um, trying to go on more hikes and more runs um, outdoors rather than just being a nerdy IT guy indoors. So um, I think that might help me do that. It might help me achieve my my fitness goals, yeah. And especially with the longer battery life, offline maps, there's like, you know, the advanced compass now. There's a lot of hiking features, which are really cool that I loved with the Ultra. Um, For me, I would love... The Ultra, I really, really would, but it's just too big um, and I think the colours for me aren't really my thing because I'm either like a gold or probably like a pink kind of gal, Yeah, you know, just yeah. being a bit stereotypical. But I think for me it'll be just the Apple Watch and I think I will probably move away from Garmin now, yep. go back to the Apple Watch and give it a crack now that it is a little bit thinner Yeah, um, just because I can get a few extra features that I don't get with Garmin being a smart watch as well as just – the interface being a lot better. That is one of the downfalls of a lot of other smart watches out there. They're not really that smart. Well, the, you get the smart watch aspect of it, yeah. but the fact that it's part of the Apple ecosystem That's the difference. is the, dif- is the yeah, yeah. differentiating factor. And you can, I, think, I think it's good sometimes going from one to the other. So it's the same as like, you know, using a Google Pixel and then using an iPhone, actually seeing those differences sort of clear as day. Like now I sort of understand it probably more by moving away from the Apple Watch, going to Garmin and then seeing, you know, in black and white where where the differences are. Yeah. So as, as good as the fitness aspect is, I think the Apple Watch has improved that so much now where it's not really necessarily, you know, paving the way for me anyway. Yeah. Maybe for athletes. Yeah. That's probably where the difference is. But, yeah, I think I think the 10 will be for me and I think it'll be um, the titanium. Is it titanium? Yeah. Gold. Gold. Boom. That's it. I'm, I'm going to go the 10 as well. Um, maybe the jet black. Maybe. That one is nice. Yeah. 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 And just for the sleep apnea detection. Yeah. I've got two kids, so it's all about rest for me right now. Tracking that. Yeah. That's, uh, that's my priority. Well, okay, what's your choices for phones? Because, like, I've got an iPhone 15 Pro Max, right? I've already got the big phone from last year. I kind of don't really need it, but I still want it. For me, phone-wise, I'm in the same boat as Will. I upgraded last year and got the 15 Pro Max. Um, so, But, I mean, if it was my upgrade time this year, I'm feeling the 16 Pro regular size because you get the five times telephoto uh, in that now. Uh, that's the one. That's the one to go. 
Yeah. yeah. How about how about you? I mean, like I said earlier, I've been patiently waiting. Yeah. Um, Which one do you have now? The iPhone 14 Pro Max. Oh, that's okay. That's, that's, I said, yeah, yeah. I said, so like two I'm, years I'm gonna, cycle. I'm going to try and stick to the two years. Yeah. I used to do every every year, you know, when I used to work at Apple, it was very quick oh, and yeah. I, would, I would just get the, the newest one. Yeah. But um, I've been trying to, you know, keep it for at least a couple of years. I, it is hard, I think, sometimes seeing all the new camera features to not get the newest one for me because, you know, I take so many photos. Yeah. I mean, like like anyone as well. Um, but definitely iPhone 16 Pro Max will be the one I'm getting and I will be ordering it. On, on Friday and Me. once I pick my colour. Um, but, yeah, it's it's a massive change and I can't wait to actually dive into it once I get it as well and, you know, do a little bit more video and just play around even with some of the style features Which that I've as well. Which colour? Which colour are you going to get? Desert? Desert is that new colour, isn't it? It kind of has Desert? to be that one, I think, because that's closest Desert. to gold. Um, yeah. Yeah, because well, otherwise it's what black and just white, I think, right? Yeah, black, yeah. white, natural. natural, which is natural. what I've got from last yeah. year's. Yeah, it'll probably just be the gold for me. I, I've been a gold gal for a while. So. Natural was was hard to get, like when it when it came out last year. It was, yeah, yeah. That was yeah. that was that was the, the one the to get. One. Yeah, which one? Oh, you've got natural, natural. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's it for now, guys. Uh, glow up event uh, recap done. Um, we're going to have some more Apple related content and fruitful discussions in the coming weeks. So please like, subscribe, stay tuned, and we'll catch you in the next one. I'm Nico. This is Christina, and we've got Will dialed in. We'll see you later.